So, so I was like, I was like eight to 11. I'd go stay the summers with dad in California. And at the time he would go to all the supercross races and we'd go the whole summer flying every weekend to all the supercross events. And I'd just hang out there with him and while he did his thing. And then uh, I'd go back home to Tennessee and stay with my mom for the school year. Sure. And then... Uh, so yeah, you were like 12. Then. Yeah. Uh, no, I was probably like 10. 10. 10. When he came back here. And then, uh, yeah, he moved back here and I came up here for the summer, seeing that that was our deal. And uh, got into racing a little bit and went out to Millbridge and started watching the outlaw carts. Max was running. And um, one day, I think, I don't know, I got to test Max's go-kart after the race. And I enjoyed it so much. And I called mom and basically told her, I'm like, I don't think I'm coming home this time. I think I'm gonna stay up here. <laughs> and that's what I did. It was just me and dad here for the first three years. Just us, no one else. And then uh, Max's dad, Mike, would actually pick me up from school. That's what you're saying, yeah. And I'd stay with them since dad was working down at Gibbs at the time. Right. But it was fun. Do you, so before all that, did you have, I mean, did you have interest in racing like super young? Did you wanna, did you wanna rip dirt bikes or did you, or was it just something you went and did because your dad was, you so, know? I really haven't had. He just kind of said like you never really, or for whatever reason, outlaw carts were like that's when it clicked. Like you really that, wanted to do that. That's really when I got into racing. Yeah. Like to be honest with you, when I lived in Tennessee, like I didn't even know racing was a thing outside of Supercross. <laughs> like I didn't know circle track. I never even heard of circle track <laughs> racing. Didn't know NASCAR. Well, I was didn't. eight to ten. <laughs> I'm like, what is this stuff? Yeah. And then we moved down here and that's all there is. Yeah. So then, yeah, I, I, I rode dirt bikes and around the yard and, you know, go-karts and stuff, just having fun, four-wheelers. But then we moved here and I got to run at Millbridge and so I don't know, I had a good time. Because yeah. uh, two races in and I'm like, yeah, I think we're going to stick with this for a little bit. This is fun. Yeah. So it was cool. How much do you think, so he was talking about going to school with racing kids and I mean how much do you think it was how much of an effect do you think it had that you were kind of around them all the time and, and you were you know around racing families and everybody was ate up with it I'm sure I think that was the case but only after I moved here yeah I think no one back home knew anything about it right. and I think once I moved here everybody knew about it so it was kind of like I was in it every minute every hour every day and uh, that's all that really got talked about. And I feel like uh, you could tell with certain people who, who wanted it more, you know, wanted to put the work in, I feel like, and, and progress themselves versus just be kind of like in the click and hang out with the racing crew. But I think, it, I think it helped me a lot just being around it all the time. We were, you know, we have to talk about well, I, you know, I get to tell him a story and your dad will be like, wait, who was that again? Who was, mm -hmm. but I've always laughed about you guys uh, having bliss around all the time. So what, how, I can't even remember how you said, how you told me that got started, but you know, so bliss is like, you know, he was as bad a dude as there was when you sack in the nineties, when I was a kid, I watched him destroy people at IRP, destroy. People at IRP. I mean, what? How'd that even? How did he even start? Like, honestly, I I don't even know how we met Bliss. I know, I just he showed up one day and he's been hanging out ever since. But I've heard a lot of stories about how good he used to be, and and I never knew anything about it until I hear these stories from other people about how good of a race car driver he was and what he did back in the day and. You know, now he don't do it so much or at all, really. But you hear all these stories from other people, and you had no idea about it. Yeah. So you had said that you were gonna run a, a car up there, probably off the outlaw car stuff. Like, didn't you? you I mean, did you go up there and win a race with an outlaw car or something? Uh, yeah, for Steve, yeah. I ran the outlaw car stuff for Steve a few times yeah. and had some success in that. And then I was supposed to run a midget for him. That deal ended up falling through. But I'd been up there for two months helping them build the cars and stuff, so I'd kind of fallen in love with midget racing, just going to the few races I'd been to. 
And that kind of what started me wanting to do our own midget deal. Yeah. I think uh, we had a dirt modified at the time. Yeah, I, I saw some pictures. And the yeah, the door up there, they're obviously way different. But this is definitely more similar to the Outlaw Cart stuff that I had started in and enjoyed the most. It's, the, it's just the racing. It's so hard, and you can drive it so hard, and yeah. it's just the speed. Modified just felt big and slow and right. too much room. I don't know. <laughs> this, you're just in it. Yeah, for sure. You're just right on it. Yeah. But. So you guys jumped right in. Jumped right to the deep end. And... Yeah, we jumped right in it, and uh, the only way we were going to be able to do it, we, we couldn't afford a Toyota or an SR11 at the time. So we, you know, dad came up with the idea to build his own engine yeah. and we started, we started on that and he built the first one, I think. And we, I don't even know where our first race was, uh, like Smackdown, I think Cook, yeah, Cook, like our first race, like yeah. it's a tough field for a first yeah. race. And, uh, this was, we didn't know nothing. I think we showed up with, uh, a, um, 378 rear end. And we didn't know there was two different rear ends, a 433 or a 378. And we had like a gear to turn it like 6,500 RPM. Like we were just idling around and like, what is the deal with this thing? We couldn't figure nothing out. And then later that night we were eating dinner with Flea and them. And they're like, well, what, what rear end you got in that thing? We're like, I got no idea. <laughs> but we've learned quite a bit since then. So, yeah, I, do you, so do you look back now? And I mean, can you realize how far you've come with it? I mean, or is it, or is it just more of you're still, you know, determined about that, lap, you know, about how far you still have to go? I mean, can you, can you appreciate how far it's come? Every once in a while, I look back and I'm, I try to talk myself into thinking that we've made a big progression and uh, come a long way since we started, but in everybody else's eyes, they think we're doing great. You know, they're, they're like, man, y'all are doing fantastic for what y'all been doing and trying to accomplish. And y'all are just picking it up so quick and this and that. But for us, our expectations are just way above everybody else's. So when everybody else says, you know, good run, you did great and this and that, me and dad are like, we're just, you know, we're just not there yet. We're just, it's just another race for us. And until we really have front runner speed and can click off some podiums and hopefully a few wins here soon. I think that's when our expectations will be met. Yeah. So coming off your chili bowl here, um, and again, I know your your expectations are high. We kind of, you know, when you put the map to it, and you're like, well, you guys were top 45 out of 309. Um, you know, is that a, is that enough to stoke the fire? You know, and 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 keep it keep it moving forward i mean i i'm sure you know even after you transferred cdb i'm sure you want to you want to run th up through there farther than you did too but um you know what can you take i guess what can you take away from that that um I, what was that your, was that your third chili bowl or third chili bowl yeah. third chili bowl yeah so i mean what, what can you take from that i think uh i can definitely appreciate being in a b main on a saturday night's no joke and it's definitely an a main field at any other race around the world. But uh, like I said, our expectations are just so high. For me, it's, it's hard to be satisfied with that. I really wanted to drive up through the B, you know, make the A main. I feel like we've been fast every race we've attended lately. We just, you know, got to pull a whole night together. But as far as, uh, I don't know, satisfying expectations, I think uh, a little bit, I have a little bit of I don't know what the word is, but I have a little bit of, uh, I guess, confidence going into Florida and uh, some newfound speed we have. But I think, uh, I think to really meet our expectations, we're going to have to win. I think we just hold ourselves to that high of a standard. So, you know, if you, when you look back at results, um, you know, and that's the thing is we, we talked a lot with your dad about, you know, there's car side. There's, mm -hmm. there's engine side, there's car side, and there's you. Right? Yeah. So, and all three of you went in as newbies in, at, at one time. Um, and it's, it's tough. Like we, yeah. It's <laughs> tough. We talked about, uh, you know, getting, you know, finding those stretches where you've done, you know, the, 
qualifying really well for a stretch, consistently mm -hmm. well for a stretch. Um, you know, where where do you feel like you've got to make up that 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 rest of the ground to be a consistent um, front runner there? Because I feel like we've we've seen you guys turn into pretty good qualifier. That's that's motor running and that's you. Yeah. One knowing where you have to be and and two, you know. Qualifying is a, is a thing unto its own. I mean, it's a it's a discipline that a lot of people struggle with. I um, think. But uh, where, where you know where do you feel like you know between yourself between you know figuring out car or, you know whatever it is on the, the engine side where do you feel like you guys have to have to make that next stride? I think uh, for most people it's a little bit easier. I'd say just because if you go buy an engine that's already developed, I feel like it shortens your learning curve and it's just less stuff to worry about but uh, I feel like our engines just now finding its sweet spot and we're just now trying to get the drivability out of it I feel like that's that's one of the reasons we've lacked in the past is when it gets slick in the feature time I feel like our power band like it's more instant instant and kind of tends to blow the tires off versus the Toyota when I've driven that or even the SR11 and then I think another big part of it too is just our inconsistency. I feel like uh, we're still learning setup a lot and, and I think that's just as important as engine and driver if not more important because you can have all the power in the world and if you, you, know, you can't hook it up then it's not doing you any good. So I think, uh, I think we hit the setup every now and then perfect and it shows in qualifying. You know, We have two quick times and I feel like the car has been perfect both times. But it also shows when we miss, and that's, that's more frequently than we'd like. So I think we got to really just uh, focus on getting a good baseline and hitting our marks more often, I'd say. Uh, you know, you guys have gone to the four-coil setup, and obviously you, you leaned a lot on um, Tanner with that stuff. You know, what's it been like? He, you know, he even ran down a little bit of some of the times you guys have leaned on other people. but. Um, I guess what's it what's it like for you not just as your hands on you know you're not just yep. a driver but you're, you're trying to work on stuff too and what's it what's it like to you know or, or work with other people or try to get a little bit of a leg up from some of these guys that have been doing it a long time or, or whatever it may be. Yeah, I think a lot of the guys in the midget pits are tight lipped about what they're doing, and I think they have a, a reason for that. I think you know they've worked a long time to get their set up books thick and, and what works for them and, and what's good. But I think, you know, Tanner's helped us there in the beginning with the coils on what he was doing and giving us some tips here and there. But for the most part, I feel like Tanner and Chad have been the most help for our little team, just as far as everything goes, really set up, just suggestions on what tires we should run, gears, just all the above, really. I feel like they've helped us the most. And, uh, but we've also learned a lot ourselves. I feel like uh, a lot of it's just, yeah, a lot of it's just experimentation and seeing what happens and how it affects the car and then writing it down and being like, okay, well, you know, next time now we know. So I think uh, we're getting there, but it's just, it's hard competing with guys that have done it their whole life. It's just hard coming in in three years and expecting to beat these guys that have been doing it for 30. Um, we talked about some of the people that hang out in your shop, and you, you had said that um, Ricky had texted Ricky Stenhouse had texted you here recently. What does it mean to you to, you know, as you're as you're struggling through, you know, your own learning curve and trying to that you've you've had guys like that sort of in your corner and and you know whether even if it's just a, it is just a text just to kind of you know keep a foot in your ass to. Keep on going. Keep going, yeah. No, it's that's a big part of it for me. I know, I know, Dad's probably a little more serious than I am, but I think uh, being liked by everybody in the pits is a big part of it. I don't want to be known as that bad guy, and but I do want to be known as the team that likes to have good time and they go to have fun, but they're also serious enough to win races. So I think uh, having like guys like Ricky and Kyle stop in the shop frequently, pretty much every week, and you know, telling us that we're doing a great job and just uh, 
I don't know, sticking behind us and rooting for us. I think, I think the more people you have rooting for you and in your corner, it just, it just makes you feel good about yourself. And uh, I think we're one of the teams that are, I don't know, really, uh, I don't even know what the word would be, but just really appreciated, I guess. And uh, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I think uh, everybody looks at us like we, we like to have a good time and yeah. we're doing what we love. Um, so you guys, not just your, your own stuff, but taking Max to, to Florida this time around. So you ran the two midgets at Chili Bowl, but now you're going to Ocala too. Mm -hmm. so, uh, tell us a little bit. Obviously, we're not going to get to talk to Max before um, you know we get to our stuff down there, but tell us a little bit about your your relationship with Max and then I guess how you're now the the uh, I don't know elder statesman or the one that, that, that knows what's going on a little bit more in your in your two car team going to Florida and how maybe you can help help Max a little bit and get him get him rolling in the midget too. Yeah so when I first moved down here the first people we met was Mike and Max McLaughlin and uh, they're really who got me into racing and and uh, helped us out like our our first three or four years racing were out of their shop in their garage every night. We didn't even have our own garage or nothing, just ran our outlaw cart program out of their shop. So they were a big part in my racing career. That's, they're the number one reason I've, I'm even in racing. And uh, I think back in the outlaw cart days, you know, Max was the elder and, and uh, I looked up to him and being like, man, I, I want to beat him. You know, he's my teammate. That's that's who I want to be because he wins, you know, every race out there. And uh, I looked up to him. I'm like, if I can be as good as him one day in the outlaw cart, then we'll be all right. And now it's kind of flipped positions in the midget scene. Now we have two midgets and uh, he's hopping in for us in Florida. And I think it's going to be cool switching roles almost, trying to help him out in the midget scene like he did me in the outlaw cart scene. So I think it's going to be cool in a... Uh, it's going to be fun, like the old days with just the four of us, me, Dad, Mike, and Max, going out to Millbridge and racing. I think it's going to be pretty similar to that in Florida, so I'm excited about it. Cool. What, uh, obviously, last year was a little bit different, you know, and when we got what we could, and same with you guys. You guys could, got, got the races you could and, and all that, but, you know, now you come into the season, you guys have high expectations. You want to run a bunch of races, but what, what's kind of on your hit list as far as something you want to – so want to want to run or, or a, a track that you want to take on that you haven't or that you that you ran before and you just want to get back to or I guess kind of what are some of the hot spots on the on the schedule that maybe you've you've seen and are looking forward to? Always one of the ones I always look forward to that we didn't get to do this year was the BC39. I thought that track is a, a really good size for midgets and it puts on some good racing. So I'm I'm excited to get back there this year, hopefully, and. Uh, Another one's probably Pennsylvania Midget Week. I love the little bull rings we go to, like Lanco and even uh, Grandview and um, Path Valley, I think. So I like all the smaller tracks, probably a little bit more than the bigger tracks, but uh, I'm excited for all of them, honestly. Like Kokomo, they're just some of the greatest racetracks I've ever been to, so I'm excited about it.